you know, side of things once the partnership return has been created. And then again, you could have within your income line items here, uh, uh, interest. But usually, again, the line items of the K-1 that flows through to the, to the individual tax return is usually pretty lined up in your data input software to the actual K-1. So it's fairly easy to do the data input normally. So let's say you had interest income here of 890 that came through. And so then if I go to my schedule B, or let me go back on over to the 1040. So now that is being included in this uh, 2860 and it's flowing through from the K-1 and you have a, a K-1 worksheet and whatnot that can kind of show that. And the reason I wanna point that out here is just because again, that becomes another one that's a little bit tricky when I'm trying to tie out this number to uh, to my forms, because I'm trying to organize my forms and this all came from the 1099 interest, but now I've got this K-1, which usually you know would flow into the, you know like an income line item or something like that, but now it's flowing, that, now that has an interest component to it, which I have to take into consideration when I'm trying to double check this number. Okay, now let's think about a situation where you had a 1099, this is an unusual situation. You got a 1099 for interest, so that would mean that you would have to record an income, but for whatever reason, it's not actually your interest income, it's the income of somebody else. And so the, the 1099 is coming to you. You might have reporting requirements to report it to